Okay, I'm going to do a quick rundown on the products I used uh, in, to uh, rebuild my specialized uh, Future Shock. Um, if you could find one, especially if your seals are worn, this is a, a Future Shock rebuild kit. Um, it'll come with some of the, the bushings and replacement seals for the fork. So if you can find one, that's a handy thing to have. Uh, you'll need a metric hex key set for taking apart the, the various bolts that hold the fork together. Uh, I used a utility knife to remove the top snap ring. It's at the top of the stanchion. It's what holds in the, the metal air cap. And along with that, once you get the snap ring removed to get the metal air cap out, you're going to want an M6 screw that you can thread into that air cap so you have something to grab and pull it out. Um, this is some 2000 grit sandpaper that you can use to remove any scratches that you get on the inside of the, of the tube when you're removing that snap ring. That way if any of those, those scratches you get rid of them and they won't be hard on the seals. Um, along with that I've got this Flitz metal polish which I used in a lot of different areas on the fork. Um, I've got this 3-in-1 bolt loosener which I uh, used for that snap ring that's at the at the top of the uh, top of the fork stanchion. I had some uh, corrosion there, and this bolt loosener helped make it easier for me to pop that loose. Um, I've also got this uh, nano lube. Um, it supposedly bonds well with the metal, so I use this to clean the fork stanchions and any of the uh, the shinier metal parts that move back and forth. Uh, but with the rubber gaskets um, just to hopefully reduce friction there. The other thing that works great is on any of these uh, uh, rubber gaskets is if you coat them with this silicone grease. This is a product you, you, that's used on, uh, you can find it at a Home Depot, it's used on on washers and faucets and things like that. It'll help make the, uh, uh, the rubber washers last longer. Uh, then I used a, a synthetic fork oil, Rock Shocks. There's several other companies that make fork oil. This I've just had good luck with Lucas products, and this is the this is a five weight uh, motorcycle fork oil, which is what they suggested using. So I used that. Um, I also used a, th a blue thread locker. I used that on any of the uh, the bolts that go into the um, the the lower stanchions for the for the shock. Uh, those bolts are you are steel and you're putting them into aluminum So you want to make sure not over tighten them But you do want to have those bolts hold firm for any vibration that may occur in the fork So that blue thread rocker works great And then this last thing I have is this rock and roll chain lube. This works real good um, After you put the fork all together Shake this up real good. Make sure it's shaken up before you use it because it settles quickly but this this will um, just makes the, the shiny metal parts extra slick so they travel uh, easier up and down in the rubber bushings without wearing. Anyway, I'll have um, a, a photo at the end of this video of all this stuff so you can pause it there and make sure you've got everything you need. Anyway, I'm going to get on with the video and start tearing apart the fork. Take, uh, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove these caps that protect the, protect the top of the seals. And you'll probably notice that the top of mine looks a little different than yours. I had to replace the, the needle, the ball needle valves uh, inside the top cap because I couldn't get them to hold air after I reconditioned them. So I replaced them with these Rock Shocks uh, Schrader valves for inflation. Now, as you can see, they stick up a little bit above the cap level. So what I did is on these caps, I bought... Um, I bought number 10 screw caps at Home Depot, drilled out the top of the cap, and then glued that in there. So that way I can still keep keep this covered, keep dirt out of there. And then these 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 Rock Shocks uh, Schrader valves, basically, they're a Schrader valve on one side. On the other end, it's an M7 with a .75 pitch. Um, so if you get a uh, a tap, you can tap out the hole. Okay, make sure your fork area, your bike, especially the fork area, is nice and clean when you do this. That way you don't take a chance on getting dirt inside those stanchions and it won't uh, affect any of the seals. Okay, 
Uh, probably the easiest way to do this once you've gotten to this stage is to flip the bike over onto the seat and the handlebars. That way you've got a nice level platform and it makes it easier to take the wheel off and all that. Okay, so next step, uh, you're going to release the side of your cantilever brakes. So you then can then uh, take off your quick release, take your wheel out. Once you've got the wheel out, you can take off the bolts, the two bolts on each side with a hex key that hold your uh, your brakes in pull off pull off the brakes and then once you've done that you'll need a wrench to take out the uh, the brake boss the the bolt that goes into your fork um, be careful when you're doing that because these are magnesium aluminum alloy so the threads are softer than steel threads so you'll take both of those sides out remove your brakes then you've got one more bolt on each side uh, that, that goes goes into the the fork the bottom stanchion of the fork now once you've done that your whole uh, brake brace should be loose from the fork so you can just move that kind of out of the way you don't have to take off the cable or anything now at that point you can come over here to the side and loosen the uh, the, the screws the hex key screws that, that hold each leg into place independently there's two on each side once you've got those um, fairly loose you can pull out each fork leg by itself you might have to wiggle it but you can pull each fork leg out by itself now once you've got that fork leg out you can use a the like the needle that you use to inflate the ball inflation needle push that in and let it uh, release um, all the air pressure from inside your fork. Make sure you keep your stanchion upright when you're doing that, that way you don't have fluid come out with it. So once you get that, once, once the air's out, um, the next step is to take, take a utility knife and there's a snap ring in there that goes in a groove that goes around the circumference of the inside of that tube um, you want to push that snap ring down to pop it out of that, that groove. And pushing it down seems to, once you get it out of the groove, you can kind of rotate it 90 degrees, and then you'll be able to grab it and pull it out. Then build, there'll be nothing holding that cap from coming out. Now, before the straighter valve is in here, uh, there's a hole where that needle valve is. If you put an M6 screw, if you thread that into that hole, That'll give you something to grab to pull the whole top cap out of there. Make sure you do that with the, the fork, fork leg being upright because all your hydraulic fluid's in there. So once you um, grab and pull that cap out, um, be careful because you might have a little bit of spray of the, 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 the shock fluid. But then you can take, take the fork and turn it over into a... Uh, oh, probably like a you can probably a 16 ounce cup. Probably have about at max maybe 80 80 milliliters of fluid in there. You can drain out that old fluid. Sometimes you can even let it sit in the cup for for a while while you're doing something else. That way you can drain all that liquid out, and then you'll be uh, ready to go on to the next stage of of rebuilding the fort. Top of the leg, you're gonna have your cap. And I've modified this one, but I'm just showing you. You have your cap that you take off. Then, inside, just underneath the cap, you're going to have this snap ring. The snap ring will fit in the groove that's down in there, which you can just barely see. Okay, so there's the snap ring. Then underneath the snap ring is going to be this, I think it's aluminum cap. And it's going to have a seal that fits around it so it's going to have that seal that fits around it and then that's going to be held inside inside the top of that shaft by this snap ring which keeps it from coming out now I've already modified uh, mine to use a uh, this is a Schrader valve from a rock shock and um, I took out this was the uh, the old needle valve seal that used to fit up inside there but um, when I put it back together I couldn't get these needle valves to seal uh, I'm sure they were good quality to begin with. It's just they get old. The rubber gets old. So I replaced it with that Schrader, Schrader valve. 
Now, when you get to the, that's the, all, the, all the stuff that's in the upper part of the fork. The lower part of the fork, and I went ahead and took this off to make it easier, show you these parts. We've got this um, snap ring, which you're gonna have to use um, either a small screwdriver, or if you have some uh, snap ring pliers, you see the two holes there? Um, once you get that off, okay, you can separate the upper from the lower. And when you do that, underneath that snap ring, you're gonna have a steel washer here. Then you're gonna have a rubber seal and there's a groove there's a groove in it that's going to face down then you'll have another uh, thin steel washer then right here you've got a thin rubber o-ring you've got these uh, bands there's one there steel band then you've got like a rubber spacer another steel band and then one more o-ring so all that goes on the end and is all those pieces are your lower and then you've got this one snap ring that holds it into the lower part of the fork now there's also a valve in the bottom and you can use those two holes to unscrew that bottom cap but I don't have any need to take that off Basically what those two holes are, it allows you to fit a, a special tool on there <clears throat> for removing that bottom cap, but it also allows the oil from the bottom part of the fo fork to come up into the uh, upper part of the fork. Um, it's really kind of simple and ingenious how this system works. It's basically got oil in the bottom of the fork and the oil does not compress, but those two holes will let the oil come up into the top air part of the fork so air part of the fork when you hit a bump compresses and when it compresses some of that oil is already in the air part of the fork but comes up a little bit and it, having that oil slows the rebound so your air doesn't snap back as hard as it did when it compressed okay now once you've got it to this stage you're going to want to pour your shock fluid in here and i'm going to use about 85 to 90 milliliters and you can just pour it in the stanchion and what I wanted to do is you want that that shock fluid to be above the two holes inside so you've got a chamber of air but you also want a little bit of fluid in the bottom of, of this tube now so what you'll do is you'll put this piece in there get it down below the groove that's inside there far enough that you're then able to pop this ring in there and um, I just this ring is really hard to get out in my opinion the, but as far as getting it back in uh, it's not too hard you just kind of compress press, press it by hand and then if you need to you can use a screwdriver just try not to scratch the insides and press that in and it'll snap into the the groove that's inside there and it'll hold this in place even when you once you've got pressure in there Okay, once you've got your individual fork legs uh, put back together, um, pressure them up, uh, make sure that they're, they're holding pressure, and then you can just reverse the process and putting the uh, fork legs back into your crown, uh, tighten the two bolts on the side. One thing that helps, if you'll look real closely, you want to get the same amount at the top of the fork crown on each side. So uh, if you have, it, it's, usually, it's like two or three millimeters. So if you have something that's about that thick, you can use that, put that along here and use that as a guide. That way you can get both sides so they're as close as possible to being equal. Um, then once you do that, you can use your blue thread locker and start putting all your, your or, uh, hex bolts back in. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, just the most important thing, uh, I can remember is to try and keep as close to equal pressure in both legs as possible. It's probably depending on how often you ride the bike. 
um, I, I would think you'd want to check it at least once a week or, and, or if you haven't ridden it for a week, then it's definitely time to, to check the pressure and make sure they're equal. That'll avoid premature wear after all the work you did.